school. These animated decorations remind me of my childhood. It's no longer just about buying things. Customers want a new experience, and that's what these department stores do best. Hello, and thanks for joining us for France in Focus. Now, it's that time of year, time for some Christmas shopping. So we've decided to explore some of Paris's big department stores, or grands magasins, as they're known. We're here on Boulevard Haussmann. There's a couple of internationally renowned examples, but of particular appeal at this time of year are the decorations in the windows. With its neo-Byzantine decor, Galerie Lafayette, where I am now, ranks second after the Eiffel Tower in terms of annual visitor numbers. And as you can see, they're very much in the Christmas spirit here. Well, there are other department stores. There's the Printemps just next door, and across town, there's BHV and Le Bon Marché. Well, let's take a closer look now at the history of these monuments to shopping, which first went into business in the mid to late 19th century. Their names bring back memories of Paris and the Belle Époque. In the mid-19th century, department stores developed alongside the Industrial Revolution. Trains would bring customers and goods to the cities. In 1852, Aristide Boussicot, then a mere employee of Le Bon Marché, bought the entire shop with the ambition of turning it into a vast modern store. Success was immediate. In just 20 years, the number of shop assistants rose from 13 to 4,000, and turnover was multiplied by 180. It was the first ever modern department store. It was a truly magical place with amazing service, art gallery shows. We served refreshments to customers. It was a place full of life. You could spend the entire day here. Boussico shook up the world of retail and introduced a number of innovations. For the first time, goods were put on display for everyone to see and touch. He also launched mail-order catalogues and began offering home delivery a few years later. Le Bon Marché's customers were then overwhelmingly female. Women from affluent backgrounds were becoming increasingly independent. At some point, husbands started getting worried because all of the shop assistants were men, so department stores were seen as places of debauchery. Boussicot came up with the idea of hiring female shop assistants. They were usually very young women, not too pretty, so as not to make the customers jealous. They were always dressed in black silk. Building on the success of Le Bon Marché, Le Bazar de l'Hôtel de Ville opened its doors in 1860, followed by Le Printemps five years later. Competition increased further at the end of the 19th century with the arrival of La Samaritaine and Les Galeries Lafayette. By 1911, department stores employed 11,000 people and had opened branches outside of Paris. Printemps opened its first ever branch store in Deauville. Why Deauville? Because there's a direct train from Saint-Lazare station in Paris. And Deauville was a popular seaside resort town. A lot of bourgeois families would go there on weekends. After the trauma of World War I, the Great Depression brought economic hardship forcing department stores to lower their prices. Ready-to-wear clothing was born. In 1933, Printemps established a partnership with Paul Poiret, who was one of the great fashion designers of the early 20th century. The idea was to launch a line of high-quality ready-made clothing. It was the first time you could buy clothes designed by Paul Poiret at affordable prices. In the 50s and 60s, department stores grew faster than ever, driven by the rise of mass consumption. The focus was on attracting ever bigger crowds. An artificial ski slope was built on the roof of Le Printemps in 1962. Meanwhile, the inauguration of Christmas window displays quickly became an unmissable event. But by the end of the 20th century, many department stores had closed up shop. Others have survived now with a renewed focus on luxury and tourism. Well, we're now at the entrance of Printemps, and behind these doors, the whole shopping experience, the Christmas decorations, it's all the result of the hard work of thousands of people. Well, we spent 24 hours behind the scenes here at Printemps. Here's what we found out. It's early morning, and 
stand at Paris's iconic Printemps department store, Sophie is making sure the shop's legendary puppets are in good working order. Ever since I was a child, I've been in this creative and artistic environment, and I've always come here to see the window displays. And yes, the Christmas displays are wonderful. Being able to work here doesn't feel like work. In the window display, it's already showtime. We came yesterday and we're back. There are beautiful animations. It's impressive. I really like it. When you see all these animated puppets, you connect with your inner child. At 8.30 in the morning, the store opens its doors and the scramble begins. With leather goods and jewellery on the ground floor, France's luxury goods grab the attention of customers. But go up to the eighth floor, and another French speciality takes centre stage, gastronomy. With so much to choose from, it's a sensory overload. Every morning, François gets fresh fish delivered straight to his restaurant. On the menu today, red mullet, sea urchins and sea bream. I love being able to see our customers, see their reactions when they're eating. We have a great view of the city. It's really a wonderful location. A few meters away, the chef at the fruit and vegetable stand is hard at work. It's a childhood delight. With her team, she's whipping up a special Christmas dessert, pavlova. It has a meringue base. The filling is soft and creamy so that when you open it, the blue is really striking. And right in the middle, I put the mango sauce. It's crunchy. On the second floor, it's time for a change of scenery. Bertrand works as a personal shopper, or put another way, a clothing specialist. He hands out advice to clients from Asia and the Gulf, but especially from here in France, home to 60% of his customers. We work in retail, but our job is also to build a relationship. There's a psychological aspect to it, but I wouldn't call it a friendship. Like Bertrand, hundreds of people work tirelessly behind the scenes of these stores to put French know-how on show. We're now at the oldest of the Paris department stores, Le Bon Marché, which first opened its doors in 1838. We're here, we're going to speak now to Franck Rosenthal, who is a specialist in French retail. Thank you very much for speaking to us. What do you think is the secret to the success of grand magasin like Le Bon Marché, where we are right now? The secret from the start has been for these stores to constantly reinvent themselves and to stay with the times, to make very beautiful stores that are inviting, which means renovating the stores, investing a lot to make them beautiful, also making displays, having new brands to give customers choices, also places to eat. That's really all a part of the secret. Yeah, and just looking around us at the clients in this particular shop, I mean, I think it's fair to say a large percentage of them are foreign, aren't they? When you are on Boulevard Haussmann in the heart of the Parisian shopping area, Galerie Lafayette and Printemps, 50% of their customers and their turnover is international customers. So much so that even Galerie Lafayette has a store that is in front of the main store, which is practically dedicated to Chinese customers. There, everything moves faster. There are staff who speak Chinese. Customers can pay with Chinese currency. This way, they don't spend all their time in the stores and have time to visit the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and other Parisian monuments. And are you seeing these grand magasins diversifying their offering? How are they keeping up with the times? I think there are two main trends for department stores. The first trend is to offer more places to eat. It allows customers to stay longer in the department store. That's the first trend. The second trend is that there are more and more services to make life as easy as possible for customers. So you have click and collect. That's when you place an order online and you pick it up in the store. 
You also have personal shoppers to give you advice and to assist you. In addition, you have stylists who can do two to three hour sessions to offer you advice, and that makes them closer than ever to their customers. And do you think the business model of Le Grand Magasin is one that can be applied outside of France? Does it work universally? Ten years ago, there were rumors that the department stores were not going to survive because of the surge of the Internet and e-commerce. People thought that department stores were in trouble, but they were able to reinvent themselves. And in every country today, they're very strong. In fact, what we see more and more, especially for French department store brands, they are exporting and internationalizing. I think of Galerie Lafayette, which opened in Beijing, and this year opened their second store in Shanghai. They're also opening a store in Luxembourg. So we see that they cross borders. And do you see the landscape for these grands magasins in Paris as being perhaps a little bit too crowded? Because we've heard Le Samaritain is going to come back. Uh, there could be other foreign competitors entering the game. Do you think it's a crowded market? I think it's a good thing for Parisian department stores to have competition and that competition is growing. The more competition you have, the more it stimulates the market and the more it develops customer demand too. On Boulevard Haussmann, you have Galerie Lafayette and you have Printemps. If one of them was to close, it would be very bad for the other, contrary to what we might think, because the area would be less of a magnet for customers. If foreign competitors set up shop in Paris, it's a good thing, because they will invest in the French economy and it will strengthen the competitiveness of department stores in France. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Frank Rosenthal, consultant and retail expert, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we have time for for this week's edition of France in Focus. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned.